We all know how hard it is to actually implement authentication with all the factors and configurations that you need to keep an eye on from verifying email and password to integrating OAuth providers to reset password and emails and literally a lot of headache. And not only that, but you actually need to make sure you set up all of these correctly and configure it the right way. Otherwise you're putting your company in jeopardy and you're giving it away in a server plate for hackers. Well, in the other hand, you can avoid all of that headache and you can use something like AuthKit where it gives you everything in one single place and all you need to do is just call one single method with one single API and you're good to go. So AuthKit is the world's best login box powered by WorkOS and Redix. It actually allows you to create awesome login boxes like these ones. And it gives you a lot of customizability. You can put your brand on with your own style, themes and stuff. You can actually go ahead and create even your own components and link them with AuthKit and WorkOS. And it basically gives you the opportunity to use all different type of authentication methods from biometric and pass keys to, you know, password strength validation, multi-factor authentication, and stuff like automatic spam and bot detection. But AuthKit gives you all of that and more on a server plate. And when it comes to pricing, you literally can get your first million users for free, absolutely for free, then you only pay for the additional. So after adding authentication to this e-commerce store in here that is built using Next.js and actually built by Vercel themselves. So after we clone it in here, we're actually gonna go ahead and add the sign in and sign up function on using AuthKit. It's gonna take us to this web page in here that's everything gonna be handled by AuthKit, whether you can do OAuth or like GitHub login in here or just simple email credentials. So for example, if you put my email in here, they continue, it's gonna ask me for the password. And as soon as I put my password in here, do sign in, it's gonna go ahead and check for the credentials and actually sign me in to the website. And all of that is with just two lines of code. Well, before we get started, this video is sponsored by WorkOS. All right, so to see the actual value of using AuthKit by WorkOS in here versus actually implementing everything manually by yourself from scratch. So we got these two simple flow diagrams that actually represent the authentication flow or authentication system for our application, for example. So for instance, if you wanted to do manual authentication or actually implement the authentication system by yourself, you will have to actually go ahead and deal with all of this crap in here. Like you have to go in every single part and actually design it and implement it yourself. You have to control like the validation of controls, uh, check if the password is expired. If it yes, you prompt the user to reset the password in here and go through many, so many other steps. And for example, authentication in here, how you generate the authentication token. If it's not how you display the error messages, let's say the user account is locked in here so you're going to have a lot of issues you go through customer support then trying to do authentication again or entering the username and password i mean it is huge and so much complicated and of course if you're doing startup or just going and want to actually have your products or application out into the market asap doing it this way is just going to slow you down but for instance, if you use something like AuthKit in here by WorkOS, it's gonna actually simplify that a lot. It's actually gonna take all the complicated parts, all the implementation, everything. It's just gonna give you that on a silver plate right over here. So it's gonna handle like redirection, authentication, password validation, everything is gonna happen right over here by AuthKit. And all you have to do is basically enter a username or password, or maybe if you're doing like OAuth, like logging with Google, for example, everything's gonna be handled by AuthKit in here, and it's just gonna grant the access to the system in here for the user if the credentials are valid, otherwise you're gonna show an error message in here and it's gonna handle the user, the load pack in here and actually try to log in again. So yes, if you compare this one with this one, it's a huge difference. All right, so let's go ahead and see the authentication flow of AuthKit and how it works behind the scenes. So you can imagine AuthKit in here conceptually is actually similar to any other social login, which is what we know as OAuth. So it's like continue with Google or when you find continue with Facebook or login with GitHub, those kind of things. But the actual benefit of AuthKit in here, it actually puts all of those together in one place with a single button and you don't have to actually worry about any other configuration. So this is actually the authentication flow. Let's imagine the user in pink and here your application in orange and work OS in blue. So first the user actually initiates signing a request. So once it clicks the button or something, it initiates that request, it goes through your application and it goes from here, it goes to right into the work OS service in here or APIs to actually request an AuthKit URL. So work OS is gonna return for you a specific AuthKit URL meant to specifically generated for your organization. Of course, that depends on your configuration or how you've configured that. So as that one is actually sent back to a user, then the user browser in here and application is gonna be like redirected back to the WorkOS URL. 
Now the user actually handled the sign in right over here inside of like the work request because now you're actually redirected there. So you enter your credentials, you use OAuth login or whatever you want. Once you're there, it's gonna actually redirect to you back. Actually, it's gonna do a new URI, specific URI with an authorization code back to your application in here. Then your application can go ahead through this authorization code in here, can go and actually request the user object in here so you can get, you know, the authenticated user and you get the data. Once the user object is actually returned, it can now actually go ahead and grant the user access to your dashboard or something and you can create a session in the browser. I mean, it's super, super simple and super straightforward. So let's go ahead and get started with AuthKit and try to actually integrate AuthKit with this e-commerce store in here that is built using Next.js and Vercel. And specifically, this was actually cloned from the famous Vercel commerce store in here that is available just on GitHub and everywhere. And, you know, they sell their own swag stuff in here from t-shirts, mugs, and, and stuff. So we simply clone it in here. And because this one doesn't actually use or have any authentication system at all. So what we want to actually go ahead and do is actually implement that and added two buttons on the top in here for sign in and sign up. And we're specifically going to use AuthKit and with WorkOS to actually include the authentication in here in less than five minutes. So to get started with WorkOS, you need to go ahead and create an account first. After you do create an account and log in into the account, you're going to end up in this dashboard. This one basically is going to allow you to control everything about your organization. As you see in here, I have code one organization that you created. And this literally all the configuration that I can access the client keys in here, and so much more. Now, the second thing you need to do is actually go to the quick start in here and you see your work OS client ID and API key in here, you make sure to copy both of them and actually go into create a dot env in here inside of your project or something. I'm assuming you're using Next.js, but for anything else, you can literally use it with any other programming language or any other framework. So depending on that, just put it inside of your env in here, create work OS client ID and work OS API key and paste both of them. The next thing you need to actually install the WorkOS SDK in here. I'm using Node.js, so I'm selecting Node.js, but if you're using Python, Ruby, PHP, Laravel, or anything else, you can do that. But with me, I'm going to copy this npm install command, just simply go to the projects and install the SDK. Now for the third step in here is actually go ahead and actually set up exactly what you want. For example, if you want single sign on, you can actually go ahead and read the full detailed guide of how to do single sign on, or maybe directory sync, audit logs. But for us, because we're using like email and password credentials, we can go ahead and access the user management guide. So simply when, once you go into the documentation, it's basically going to tell you exactly how you set up and how to install the SDK, which we already did. But the most important part in here, if you go to the add authkit to your application, it's going to provide you with a sample code in here, which basically you can just go and copy paste. That's basically what I did. And make sure if you're using up router or pages router in here, or even express, but for us, Next.js up router is what we're doing. You can go ahead and copy that code, go to each project in here and just paste it. So this code will be responsible for using the WorkOS SDK in here to authenticate with WorkOS, or more specifically to allow users to go ahead and redirect to the WorkOS hosted authkit UI in here. So the user can complete the sign up or login or OAuth login or sign up. So simply you can just go and add this into like your library utils. So you can do authentication to TypeScript, which is just simply a function that uses AuthKit in there. And all it does in here just calls WorkOS user management authorization URL, which basically gonna give you like the authorization URL we already talked about. And this authorization URL, you can just go ahead and like return it. So you can tell Next.js to redirect the user once it clicks on the sign in button or the sign up button to redirect to that specific authorization URL, which is gonna be like the hosted UI of authorization kit and, and work was that will basically allow you user to sign up and log in. As you in here, I'm putting this new parameter in here that's going to be out soon. So it's going to be screen hints and you can provide either sign in or sign up. So by default, it's actually it's sign in. But if you want to redirect to the sign up page, you can just provide in here sign up, you know, just as the parameter and it's going to just take them to the sign up page instead of the sign in. Now, if you scroll a little bit down, you're going to find the add callback part in here. So the callback is going to be responsible for handling like after the user is signed in or signed up using, you know, work away or AuthKit like hosted UI, it gets redirected back to your application. And when it gets redirected, it will end up in this callback sort of like page. So they have to create this callback page to handle the redirects and actually grab the user session as creating it actually the user objects. So once you grab the user objects, you can basically like check if the user is valid, you can get all the user details. Or of course, what you should do is actually keep the user session by like creating a GWT token, storing it in cookies or returning it as a response. So just go ahead and copy this file in here, go back and actually go into your app directory. 
So like the app directory in here, I've actually created a callback and I put route.typescript. Make sure to put route.typescript and just put this one in here because it's going to be like get and it's going to be called once the user is actually redirected back. So simply in here, I can go and do like console log. And for example, receive the user. I can just console log the user in here that we extracted from the authenticated user. I can go in and click save. Now, the last part you make sure you do is actually go into your dashboard, go to redirects, and this actually allows you to configure all the redirects. For us, the signing callback redirect in here, we're putting it on localhost 3001, which is exactly where our application is running. The next JS e-commerce store application run in. So you make sure to put the right callback URL in here for the route you just like copy pasted and created. So it knows exactly where to redirect back the user. So for us, what we exactly want is actually the user when it clicks on sign in or sign up, we want that like just go ahead and redirect them to like the work OS authorization URL so they can complete the sign in or the sign up. And you simply go back to your navbar component here and you call the two methods or basically the method that we created the get authorization URL, whether you want the sign up, you pass in the sign up parameter in here. So the sign up URL or the sign in URL. And because this is a server component, this code can only run on the server because as I said, navbar is a server component. So they, they can safely run over here without any issues. And later on, we can go down in here into the buttons for our sign up button and sign in button. We can just go ahead and redirect to sign a URL or the sign up URL. I mean, it's very, very simple. Now, if we go back to the page in here and go ahead and actually create sign up in here, as clear as it goes and redirects us to the sign up page that is actually hosted. If you just take a look on the URL on offkit.up and you've got like your staging application name in here that is randomly generated for you. Now, the sign up in here, you can put your first name, last name, email, and you can sign up, or you can use OAuth providers like Google, Microsoft, or GitHub that are already pre configured for you. So you don't have to worry or do anything on your end. And if we try the sign in button here, so just do go ahead and do sign in, we are ending up on a sign in page. So let's go ahead and try to sign up. So I'm going to just put my name in here, my last name, I'm going to just go ahead and use my email, and I'm going to go ahead and do continue. Now, later on, it's going to ask me for password. So I'm going to try to create a somewhat stronger password in here. So I'm going to include like a special character for this one to work because it has you know strong password validation for that. And I'm going to go ahead and do continue. So once everything is done, it's going to tell you, oh, sign up successful. You can go ahead and sign in now. It redirects you to the sign in page. You can go in and do continue. And once you're there, you can put your password, you do sign in. And now it literally go ahead and actually tries to verify your email by sending you a special code into your email. I mean, it does that everything by itself, like WorkOS and AuthKit does the magic. It sends you the email or sends you basically like, you know, a special email with a special code that you need to copy paste into this one to make sure you verify your email. So if I go ahead and copy paste the code in here, it's going to do the magic it does. And there you go, it redirects me exactly back to my application in here. And now because we're doing console log on that callback URL in there, or the callback handler in there, as you can see, just do console log the user and it gives us the user objects in here with email, whether email is verified or not, first name and last name in here, created at an updated at and a specific generated ID. That looks pretty, pretty cool. And of course, if you want to keep the session of the user in here, you have to go in and actually use the user objects in here, create like a GWT token or a JSON web token for it, store it in cookies or local session, and you can do the magic of keeping the user authenticated throughout your application. So we will cover that more in details and the whole implementation in the next video. Now, if you want to go ahead and actually test OAuth, it actually works pretty, really well. For example, if we choose Google OAuth, it takes us to the Google OAuth page. And for example, if you choose my email every like signed up with it says oh continue you want to sign into work OS yes continue please and there you go it just goes and redirects me back to my store and again if we check out the logs we've got the user right over here and in the other hand if you want to actually create an integrate off kit with your own custom sign up or sign in page I mean, you can easily do that with the AuthKit API in here that has tons and tons of stuff from like user management to SSO in here, organization management, at like password reset, magic authentication, single sign on, like the API is literally magic and you can literally do anything you want with it. So for example, we got this login page in here, which is custom login page. I don't want to use the hosted login or sign up and sign in page by AuthKit, but I want to actually create mine, but still use WorkOS and AuthKit for my user management and everything through their API and SDK. Well, I can easily do that with the API. So for example, I got this page in here with like OAuth, like Google OAuth, GitHub. I want to like use email, password, sign in and sign up. 
So for example, this is the form in there. It's like the custom sign in and sign up form. I can easily integrate it with AuthKit by just going ahead and using, for example, you see this email and password. I created like a simple method in here called sign in. And all I'm doing literally just accessing the work who was in here SDK that we installed before I'm passing it like the work was API key and I'm doing work was user management authenticate with password. And this will all the way to authenticate with a normal email and password. And of course you need to pass in a client ID in here and this will simply just go ahead and authenticate and return the user result right over there. And later on, you can go ahead and use this one by importing the sign in function and you can just do action sign in using the new react form action. And this will ensure to run the sign in method completely on the server, but not on the client. So you don't expose your API keys. So for example, if we try out this code, we put the email in here and the password we already have created an account with, I just want to sign in. So I do sign in in here. And if I go back to my terminal, because we're already doing, you know, console log the result. So like the login results in here, actually authenticated the user, it brought me the user objects in here that I already have with a special GWT access token as well. And a refresh token. So in the upcoming video, we're going to take a look and deep dive into authentication versus authorization, how you can implement authorization using AuthKit and WorkOS, and how you can actually, you know, manage the sessions of your users using AuthKit and including so many other awesome features like sessions, roles, data doc streaming, edge runtime, and impersonations that were just released during the work was lunch week, it was just that week. So we're going to just cover them more in the upcoming video and see how you can create your next level authentication system with just a couple of lines of code. And AuthKit just recently released this new helpful library, the Next.js helpful library, it's called AuthKit Next.js, which will go ahead and actually give you a lot of helpers to use inside of your Next.js application to play integrate with AuthKit. And you don't have to reinvent the wheel, you can just go ahead and import those teeny tiny functions, like for example, get a user, sign out, get sign in URL, and everything going to be provided by that library in here, you can easily use it inside of your components. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. If you have any questions about WorkOS or AuthKit, let me know in the comments below, I would be happy to help. So anyway, guys, see you all hopefully in the next videos.